In becoming a guide, one of the first and most important things you will need to do, as well as you will need to facilitate or foster within your own um, fractal, the clients and the customers, the consumers, the students, the friends, you will need to help them learn how to surrender to the form. So can you remember the first time you witnessed your mind's lies and could let them go? That distinct, clear memory of the first shattering of what happened when you recognized the, the hold that your mind had on your activities, your beliefs, your thoughts, what you'd realized was true about yourself, everything just cracked and shattered. I could remember that time. Remember, I said it was about my heart center. And I can remember standing in a store with my now husband. Back then, we were just boyfriend, girlfriend in the new fresh, you know, throws just uh, maybe eight months in. So the honeymoon had started to wear off a little bit. And I could remember he was upset. I assumed that my uh, action or whatever I said or did caused the upsetness. And I remember my mouth opening up and out came the words, I can't do anything right. My eyes widened, my hand flew up and co covered my face, my mouth. And I was shocked because I could recognize, having gone through living your design, that this was a not self strategy or a tendency that this was a false and negative belief that I had about myself, where I delivered the ultimatum, I can't do anything right, says the poor three, personality three. Yeah, even in my heart center, there's a third line there. We know the third line is about making mistakes. And the most downtrodden human beings you will find on this planet are the unconditioned or undeconditioned. There we go. The deeply conditioned third lines always negating, berating, thinking that there's something wrong with them. We have to let go of the mind's lie, let it go and surrender to the form and its truth. One of the deepest recognitions, another one, a deeper shattering that I had down the road was remembering, you know, the story. Every time the emotional system goes into its pain and suffering with regards to its uh, emotional state being on the dysregulated and dis uncomfortable side. And the mind starts to kick it up a notch and come up with reasons and stories as to why you are sad or not feeling well. Coming up with everything's my fault. It's all their fault. Fault, blame, shame, guilt. Yeah. All of these negativities that the mind cooks up. Those are all lies. They're never authentic, real, and true. When you think about yourself inside of your head about yourself, it's always layered on with the deepest of conditionings and the deepest sufferings and pain points. It's not the truth. So in order to let help your clients let go of that mind story, you must first have walked through that door yourself. So this is what some of this work that we're going to do in the next um, couple of months is help you recognize that mind's lie and let go of its inherent falsities. And it is the thing that will repeat louder and louder and louder, louder than the quiet, still, soft voice of the aware splenic center, louder than the response of the body, the mind will kick it up and will repeat and repeat and repeat. That is the clue to let go of the repeating mind that makes you shrink and feel negative, negated and disempowered. That is not our truth. So a living your design guide teacher is a guide to awakenness. Living design is a great trip. Your responsibility in that is that you're here to help people wake up. This is not about training others as professionals. This is the only spiritual course you'll find in human design. So when you work one-on-one -on -one with a client, unless that client is aiming for moving on and becoming a certified guide or an analyst themselves, it's not about teaching them the mechanics of the structure of the human design body graph. It is about helping solve their dilemmas by helping them recognize the truths inherent within that 
core aspect of what they are for themselves or for the world. So waking people up is not about adding on more piles of shame and guilt and blame and regret. It is about fostering and serving with compassion and holding that light, broadcasting that light of someone who is aligned to truth. Not that we give our truth to them that they have to follow our truth, no, but that we take that that little burning flame inside of us that has been ignited by design and we help light that candle that they already have maybe just slow burning embers because it's all lit when we were born, but it becomes darker and darker and darker. The more the shadow self rears its ugly head and attempts to take over the life because of the conditioning, help light that fire inside that other. We all have it. We all have that fire, that burning, that longing, that yearning for truth, for living our own truth, for not taking on someone else's truth. This is why Ra always taught human design from this place of experiment. Try it and see. This is not about taking on the responsibility for someone else to wake up, but giving them all the tools, all the techniques, which that is what human design is. It's simply a technique a technique for helping someone discover the truth that is inherent within them. This is why we have strategy and authority. This is why we have the human design system as form knowledge. Ross said that this was, he was a messenger of the form, that the human design system was here for the world to have its own authority. And it begins with you and anyone else you come into contact with to stand as a shining example of someone who walks their truth, whatever their truth is, whatever your truth is, this form knowledge, this one precious life that you have to offer to live in an example of someone who is empowered and shares or supports in alignment with their own truth. So that's one of the things that I really want to get across is that we need to make mind our servant, not the master. Now, mind isn't for turning off, Ross says. It's for aligning. It's for correcting it. We have great minds. They're beautiful things. But the mind is not there to be your enemy for life. It isn't. It's here to serve. It's here to express you. It is here for the communion of one unique, differentiated perspective to an other. So standing in the truth of your sovereignty, that you are the authority of what it's like for you, and helping to translate what you see in the materials in this being, and helping to guide them home to their own truth. That's why we have strategy and authority. Now, when you're shifting from being a student, which is what you're doing, should you step through that doorway? into the world of becoming a human design professional. It means that you begin to learn from your students by walking the path with them. The work of a living your design guide never ends because it's not about, you know, only showing up and spouting the the words that are on the slides. It's about living, breathing, and being this. This is a lifestyle Because if you are not aligned within, you are not going to be effective without or outside of this little bubble that you inhabit, this form that you are witnessing and watching. 